The Unshackled Waves, episode 178. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. A bit of a shortened show this week, where I will be joined in a moment by editor-at-large of The Unshackled, uh, Steel Archer. He'll talk about the uh, latest uh, housing slump in the global market and how it's tied into interest rates, as well as looking at the overall uh, message from the uh, current social media deplatforming of people such as Alex Jones and Infowars, Gavin McGuinness and the Proud Boys, and what it means for the, the state of internet free freedom, and of course, uh, free speech. Steele, welcome back to the show. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me back and uh, pleasure to be here. Now, we had John Adams on the show uh, a while back where he talked about the, the coming economic Armageddon, and a lot of it has to do with the, the state of the, the housing uh, market. And yeah, there's been much commentary about Australia's uh, housing uh, bubble, and it seems to be the, the case uh, a lot elsewhere. But uh, you follow these uh, economic developments uh, quite closely, and you've noticed that housing prices are beginning to slow in growth uh, globally. What does that mean? So, yeah, I find this a very interesting turn of events, Tim, because this week is the week we've sort of, we're starting to go over the hill. We're starting, the ball is starting to roll down where housing prices globally uh, across all these bubble economies are starting to go down. And what does that mean? That's really important because, because interest rates, within the context of interest rates, uh, we're in a globally, we're in a, a zero interest rate policy or an, uh, sometimes in some countries a negative interest rate policy. But it's important It's important because when you lower interest rates, interest rates are supposed to spur economic growth. But all they ever did was spur housing growth and housing prices. And that led to bubbles. And now those bubbles are bursting within the context of zero percent one percent sometimes around two percent interest rates this is extremely troublesome uh this, john adams he's he's right on the money on this one economic armageddon is coming it's absolutely coming and and it's it's kind of like w- why you would think of all this censorship with info wars and the attack on the media and the attacks the attacks that are coming is because the economic Armageddon is just around the corner. And I, I wanted to go on record as saying we are flying too close to the sun for comfort. And always is the case is when there's a, a bubble and especially with a low interest rate, it takes the form of housing and other uh, uh, capital uh, intensive industries. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, consumer prices and all importantly, uh, wages growth, because uh, stagnant wages, it's been a topic of, of discussion in Australian politics for probably uh, the, the past year. We're seeing assets go up in value yet uh, people's paychecks uh, are not increasing by that much. This is absolutely a fantastic point because look, if you, if you look at if you look at America, America is sort of a little the American wage prices are moving a little bit. They haven't moved much, but in the Trump economy they're moving a little bit. But in Australia, if you look at the price uh, wage price index, for example, that it's stagnant, it's stagnant. Wages are not moving at all. And, and consumer price is going up. So people all around me, just my general friends, my people in the street, they're all saying, why is food going up? Why are energy prices going up? Why are all my bills you know, going up and my wages either stagnating or, or, or collapsing? And, and, you know, and the, the central banks aren't doing anything about this. They're, they're, they're looking for inflation in the economy. They're, they're searching for this inflation. And they're not, and sometimes, sometimes they're getting it, sometimes they hit and miss a bit, um, but mostly they're missing. Um, and, you know, and the global growth just isn't there to back them. It's just not there to back them. And uh, we're, we're standing on the edge of a precipice because the, the, uh, the uh, people are not going into the stores. They're not buying, uh, you know, re- retail, uh, retail goods anymore. 
Um, you know, the retail index in, in America is, is slumping. Uh, in the UK, it's it's holding out there just, um, and you know, they're trying they're trying to you know, but in Australia, you know, we we it's 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 not looking good. The retail sector is not looking good, and the the velocity of money is slowing as well. Um, looking at the velocity of money charts and the velocity of money is slowing as well within the context of this zero interest rate environment. And I think this is paramount of why there's all this censorship that's going on right now in the in the cybersphere. I think there's I think there's something big right around the corner, Tim. Yes, that's been probably the biggest story internationally the the, the past uh, couple of weeks because obviously the the the, the big uh, I would say shock is that uh, Alex Jones Info Wars, they were uh, kicked off uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Spotify, and iTunes all in the space of 24 hours. He was only left uh, Alex Jones with, with Twitter, and now he's been uh, suspended from that as well. And everyone was wondering if they can do that to Alex Jones and Info Wars, given how big that he is, the, the reach and influence that he has, who else are they going to do, do it to? And of course, Twitter did it to uh, Gavin McGuinness and the uh, Proud Boys. I had one of the, the US uh, Proud Boys on, Jason Van Dyke, on the, the, the previous show to talk about that because uh, apparently the, the Proud Boys violated Twitter's rules on uh, promoting violent uh, extremist uh, groups. And then we've had uh, this week another uh, development. Uh, Robert Spencer, who is a uh, anti-Islam uh, activist, he's uh, written plenty of books on it. Um, don't get him confused with uh, Richard Spencer, two completely different people. Uh, but he uh, had Mastercard uh, pulled. People weren't able to uh, donate or pay for his products through uh, Mastercard, and so that was. Uh, a uh, credit card company uh, deplatforming de somebody, which is uh, uh, probably the the next step. I mean, we knew that uh, f Facebook and all these other major tech tech companies were terrible uh, in, in regards to uh, no platforming people, but obviously had taken to the next level. But uh, credit card companies, and of course, we've also seen uh, PayPal. They uh, suspended donations to WikiLeaks at one stage, and of course, uh, Patreon uh, has uh, kicked off. Of people such as Lauren Southern and, and Faith Goldie, so they'll they'll not just uh, try to get you deplatformed, but cut off your income as well. And it seems that these uh, uh, these facilitators, these merchants, are prepared to do the same as well. Well, they tried this on a national level. Uh, Obama tried to cut uh, Russia off from the SWIFT system, from the SWIFT system, which is the system, the interbanking lending mechanism. Um, so, you know, they've tried it on a national level and they also tried, uh, you know, when they um, bailed in creditors and, um, you know, in Cyprus, when they just took people's bank accounts, they just took people's bank accounts left and right in Cyprus. Um, so we've seen we've seen the banks, you know, rob and rape and and pillage before. Uh, but now we're seeing them enter a new arena, which is the arena of censorship. And and uh, um, PayPal and all, all of these uh, MasterCard and Visa uh, and, and all these other credit card companies and things, they, they, they're entering a new field of censorship, which is extremely disturbing. Um, it, it, you know, it, 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 begs to, it begs you, what, what, uh, what is the world coming to? But this, this is all true. Um, you know, I, I, like the media, the media is, what people don't understand is the media is owned by a few big conglomerate companies at the top and those companies are generally classed as entertainment they're not even classed as genuine news they're literally entertainment companies walt disney or you know. so uh when 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 all these companies come out and they you know write editorials you know you're attacking journalistic uh you know, we're, we're going to lose our editorial freedom while they turn around and attack Infowars, you know, Infowars is a dissident channel. You know, you listen to him, you don't like what he says, you turn it off. You, you, Young Turks is the same. Why do they have to force force feed Young Turks? I, I was just, I was just today watching, uh, going through my YouTube uh, feed, which is genuinely, gen, generally been stacked with a lot of alternative news sites and podcasts and uh, alternative voices and stuff. 
And I'm getting continuously college humor, young Turks, college humor, young Turks, college humor, young Turks. I can't, I can't stop it. I was annoyed for a second about the YouTube algorithms because they were giving me a lot of funny stuff that was going off. Now I can't get rid of YouTube, uh, young Turks, you know, college humor. I can't get rid of it. So I, I think there is a mass censorship that's coming. Uh, they're starting on these platforms, but there is like the, the American Constitution is the closest thing that we have to a, an Internet Bill of Rights. OK, and because there is no Internet Bill of Rights, they're, they're, they're coming for Infowars and they're coming for uh, the media in general. They're, they're, they're on their way to, uh, you know, monopolizing the Internet. Right? You know, and it's scary and it's and it's gross and it's disturbing and you're taking people like the Proud Boys off is is obviously uh, a low, low blow when they leave ISIS, you know, accounts. And Antifa. Oh, and Antifa. Yeah, I forgot the the the, the, the fanboys of 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 of, uh, of Twitter. Yeah, the, the but Western look, uh, terrorists. It's it's totally disgusting. It's totally disgusting. Uh, but this week has been this week has been a really important week, and I just wanted to. You know, highlight that this week is a, is a is a turning point in in the global you know conversation. This is a turning point. House prices are now starting to collapse, which means economic collapse is on its way. Censorship is on the rise. The globalists are you know they they're coming for what's left of the internet, what's left of the free speech on the internet. Um, you can't survive in the casino gulag, as Max Kaiser puts it. Uh, on a single website, you do need these platforms. Um, blockchain, put that over to the side for a second. That's something that could, you know, change the change the conversation in terms of this internet censorship. Um, but you know, I, I was just thinking about the, the the readers of TU. I was thinking about TU because how are, how are alternative platforms like yours over there, Tim, and TU? Um, how are these guys going to, you know? progress into the future if their whole business model if the whole you know function of telling truth and speaking truth and power to the people and and free speech and free and how is that going to even be a viable sort of uh mechanism into the future if if there's this big interstellar intergalactic war going on in new york you know um this this is really important stuff and you know we need to rally as as a community behind a, an Internet Bill of Rights or something, because censorship is coming. It's already here, obviously, uh, conservatives and stuff like that. But it's 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 crazy. And all oh, this big editorial, you know, this big editorial, this this thing where there's 350 companies or 250 or 150 or whatever it is, all writing the same thing about Trump while all denouncing fairly pretty much info wars and the fact that, hooray, they've kicked this off the platform and now they're coming for conservatives and now they're coming for alternative voices and now they're coming for alternative financial analysts and everybody else. This is crazy and we've hit the turning point. This week was the turning point um, in the global tide. I just wanted to make that point clear on record. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe that the mainstream media still believe that they're the the victims in the the Trump era. I mean, uh, because uh, uh, Trump doesn't take questions from CNN and calls them fake news, that's apparently a threat to the First Amendment. But they all cheer on uh, Alex Jones being uh, kicked off. So, uh, social media and uh, it just says it all all of these mainstream media outlets i mean their their, their circulation and and ratings are, are dying i mean just look in australia nine and fairfax had to merge uh, to ensure uh, their survival the fact that they're getting together and having a joint editorial uh condemning trump i mean that that, that, that basically shows where they're at and why they're, they're, they so want to go after alternative players and also uh, why, why the public is, is just uh, so sick of them. Trump, Trump let CNN in to have, a, have their own studio inside the White House. I don't know how, I don't know how he's anti-CNN. He let them have their own studio inside the White House with direct, almost down the, the corridor access to the Oval Office. I don't know what they're complaining about. 
You know, they they're not. It's like not like they have been kissed, kicked out of the, uh, you know, Sarah Sanders uh, press conferences, briefings or anything. I mean, there's the media freedom for for the most part is alive and well. These corporations are very very greedy. These corporations are working with some sort of sinister, you know, section of either either the corporate world or the government or a bit of both or geopolitics or there's something going on. There's something going on and they're cracking down on your and my and all of our audience and all of the conservatives and any decent thinking person. They're cracking down on their freedom of speech. They're cracking down. They're coming. And they're starting with Alex Jones and all the, these, you know, these these media outlets who cheer, you know, if the day if 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 Trump really wanted to, he could he could sort of put a slammer on it. But he's not. It's these leftists, these globalists or whatever you want to call them, who are who are pushing this agenda, you know. So, you know, I, I wonder, you know, I was wondering, I saw that Anning speech that everyone's going on about uh, it's Fraser Anning or whatever. You know, I wonder if in the future, five years or something, you'd be even allowed to report on that speech, the fact that it happened. You know what I mean? It'll be on some parliamentary tape somewhere. I remember yeah. the, the, the Blair Cottrell interview on Sky News that apparently didn't happen. It keeps getting, every time it's uploaded by somebody, it keeps uh, getting deleted. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, you know, are we in Eurasia or East Asia? Are we at, who are we at war with? This is 1984, you know, it didn't happen. It did happen. We are at war. We're not at war. This is, this is a total mind control, crazy regime. And, and alternative platforms like the Unshackled can, can survive the fire. They're going through the fire. They can come out of it. You know, we, the, 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 the support base has to be strong. You have to be there. You have to, you know, Buy products, and you have to support and donate, and, and do and do what you can, um, and you know, like and subscribe and and share. You have to do all these things. These are super important because you know, the, there's a slim, thin layer of 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 defense, and and it's and it's not very strong, and it's not very stable. But it relies on the viewer support. It lies on it relies on the every man to you know to to support these to support these things otherwise you're just going to end up with the one opinion the mainstream opinion we've hit the turning point we've hit the global the global house prices are coming down the the economic collapse is on the way they're coming the, the good days are over rally behind your your independent media over here at young chapel rally behind them get ready to rock and roll because we've hit the turning point yeah, and even if you think that some mainstream media outlets are your friends, as Sky News demonstrated uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll turn on you if there's some corporate money they, they won't get, or some mainstream politician might never give them an interview again. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to uh, eventually stab you in the back. While, yeah, the, the independent uh, media, I mean, we don't answer to uh, anyone. Uh, we're not uh, scared of what others are going to say about us. I mean, we can always be depended upon to give, give you uh, our unfiltered opinion and bring you the the news makers uh, in in full that's exactly right tim that's that's 100 percent correct look listen the the internet is going a, on uh, there is a fundamental shift underway within the internet the, the censorship is becoming extreme the levels of censorship are extreme and the the most important part is the whole environment is complicit in this fraud of censorship the unshackled and a few other you know patriotic sort of outliers stand above this and and this is why you have to keep this fight keep going strong don't don't cave don't don't give in to these bullies don't give in to these these hounds you know these guys these guys are absolutely uh crazy you know they're, they're on fire right now because they know they've made some mistakes in the economy with the wars, with the, you know, with uh, you know, with the healthcare, with the, the cheating in the healthcare system. They know they've made the mistakes, and they're trying to cover their tracks now. And it's up to us, as you know, which has been enshrined as you know, the fourth estate, the the media, the free press, the free voice, to 
you know, call out these guys and don't let them get away. But for that, you know, we need the support of the people. The people have to be behind, you know, platforms like the Unshackled and the other voices that are out there, the alternative voices, the First Amendment voices, defending the First Amendment of the United States, freedom of speech, defending, you know, this idea, getting on board with this idea of a Bill of Rights on the internet to keep it free, to keep it free from those that wish for people and platforms and ideas to be silenced. I got a call tonight from an associate of the the Unshackled, and uh, he runs a, a meme page which has just got zucked, and said to me, "I'm amazed you guys haven't been uh, zucked at all, but we've we're we're lucky in that regard. But we know what could happen at uh, any moment, which is why we've invested so much in our web presence. So if anything does happen to us on one of the social media platforms, you can always go to the Unshackled uh, .net, and we've of course also got our email list there, which in case uh, we ever lose our uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube followers, we've got a way to directly reach them and say, hey, this is what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is really important. We're going back to the, the bones of the internet. And that's how you know that you're in a you're in a you know, you're on a good you're on a good dime with a good platform if they're willing to give you and feed you information at, at such a base level. Um, you know, so this is this is good stuff. People get behind the unshackled, support it, you know, stand up, bill of rights, free speech. Let's go, let's do it. We can do it as a community. We just have to stand up to the bullies, stand up and face them and call them out and keep going, and keep pressuring. We don't let them win. We're not going to let them win. Oh, I certainly enjoy being in this fight with you, Steele, and thanks once again for coming on the show. Thank you, Tim, and uh, we'll, keep, well, we'll keep watching and we'll keep, we'll keep fighting. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Coming up in Melbourne this month is the March for Men, which will be on Saturday the 25th of August at 1pm at Federation Square. It is designed to bring attention to men's issues and say that it is okay to be masculine. It is being organised by local social media personality Sydney Watson, the Campaign Against Racism and Fascism, uh, along with the National Union of Students Women's Department, have organised a counter-protest against what they call a far-right and racist and bigoted event. We will be there to cover the event from both sides, so stay tuned for that, and please don't be deterred from attending. The next international guest coming to Australia is former UKIP leader and Brexit champion Nigel Farage. Next month, he is visiting Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth and Brisbane, as well as Auckland. The Campaign Against Racism and Fascism are planning to go along to that Melbourne event as well, but I think they'll find it a bit more difficult to disrupt an event with an international politician. You can get your tickets, including various VIP passes, by visiting nigellive.com.au. Also, to make sure that we can continue to put content out on a regular basis and cover all the news as it happens, uh, please consider becoming a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.